Well, hello and welcome to the UNSW Sydney LinkedIn Live channel. This is our very first LinkedIn Live and we're excited to be coming to you live, I think self-explanatory, from Sydney, Australia. Uh, we're here on campus and the point of being here today is to launch our brand new program in data science and decisions. My name's Chris Lewis, I'm the head of onshore partnerships here at the university, uh, which really just means I get the exciting opportunity to talk about all of our new programs um, and everything that we have on offer. Um, and in a moment, I'll introduce you to my very special guest. Uh, but I do want to say that we are live. We will take your questions. We'll be here for at least the next 15 minutes. So anything that we discuss, any questions that you may have, please shoot them on through um, and we'll answer them as quickly as we can. If we don't get to your question today, uh, we will follow up with you um, as we go. Our team's on standby to talk to you in the comments um, and we'll post up anything that we do need to do um, to follow up with your questions. So we're talking data science and decisions today. Um, and I'm very lucky to be joined by Professor Scott Sissom, um, our Head of Statistics here at UNSW within the Faculty of Science and the School of Mathematics. Uh, Scott, thanks for joining me. Well, thanks, Chris. It's, it's good to be here. <laughs> so we're talking about the brand new program in data science and decisions. Um, it's a nested program. So we've got a graduate certificate, which leads into a graduate diploma, which leads into a master's. And we'll go into the technicalities of that um, as we go through. But I think um, as people start to jump on the feed, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what got you interested in this world of mathematics and statistics? Sure. Well, look, I mean, I've always been interested in maths and I've always been interested in computers completely separately. Um, but when I was young, maybe about 11 years of age, I came across something called the Monty Hall problem. Maybe you've heard of this. It's is this the game show? It's the game yeah. show, yeah. 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 So you, you, you're a contestant on a game show. There's three doors. There's a prize behind one door and you have to choose one of them. So you choose one, but then the game show host opens one of the other doors and shows there's no prize behind it. And then he offers you if you want to change doors or not. And the, the question is whether you should change drawers, what's, what's, what's the proper strategy? Um, and of course, the proper strategy is that you do change. You've got a twice, yep. uh, twice the high chance of winning there. But when I was 11 years old, I didn't believe this at all. So I couldn't do the math, so I reached straight for my computer, and I wrote a computer simulation that basically aimed to simulate thousands and thousands of these games. Right. And I count the number of times that somebody won. Um, now, obviously, I lost I lost this bet. Um, I, I was completely wrong, and of course, the, the swapping strategy was the best one. But but what I learned from this is that there's a lot of connections for me with mathematics and statistics and and computers mm. uh, and coding and computer science that I've taken with me ever since. So so now, as you say, I'm I'm here working at UNSW as a professor of statistics and data science, um, and I do many many different things on almost on a daily basis. So so in the last couple of weeks, um, I've worked on projects in uh, climate extremes. Um, last week I was working on a project um, that's trying to identify crop types from, from satellite uh, images. Um, and next week I'm going to be figuring out new algorithms for classifying people based on their social media networks. So it's very varied. Um, I've, got a, I've got a portfolio, a sort of a skill set, you know, maths and computer science that I can take everywhere. And I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. So it's portable. It's not the, this skill set in this data science sort of world is not stuck within one industry. And I guess we hear a lot about it. Um, in the media, we hear a lot about it in, in some of our reporting. Um, so companies like Deloitte saying that, you know, Australian businesses alone are going to have to grow their data um, analytics and capabilities by up to 76% um, and, and upscale in, in that sort of area over the next few years. And I guess we hear some really interesting sort of things at the moment in the media. Um, you know, your tech companies, your Ubers, yeah. your Netflix. Um, that data is becoming the, the commodity. I don't, I don't, that's probably not new news to people watching this stream. Um, but what are some of the, what are companies trying to do with that data? How do we, how are we working with it? What are the benefits? Well, I mean, I mean, that's exactly the problem how you described it. So, I mean, the recording of data has become very cheap and storing of it's become very cheap. So the companies have these big warehouses and they're trying to make value from their data uh, in some way. Um, what's tend to happen in the past is that um, uh, the companies have hired three types of individual. Yep. They've, they've hired um, the math stat person, they've hired the computer scientist, they've hired the business analyst. And together they've been putting these people together as a team to try and you know, extract something of value from, from their data. Now, I don't know if you remember a few years ago um, when, when data science first became a thing, mm. um, and there was these Venn diagrams. So describing data science as the intersection between you know, maths and stats, uh, computer science, and then also business analytics. And the people that they really wanted to hire were the people right in the middle. Yep. And they called them unicorns right. because this person did not exist. Um, 
So, you know, they had to hire different people with, with particular strong backgrounds, but really they wanted to hire someone in the middle who could do all the jobs. But, I mean, I, so I guess some of the problems with hiring, you know, people with particular skill sets is that they may or may not be able to talk to each other. Mm. So you might have, for example, um, a mathematician who comes up with a model in a business who then doesn't really talk well enough with a computer scientist, and so it's not very computationally viable. And then they talk to the, the business analyst who then informs them, you know, too late that, okay, it's, this is not actually a model we can ac extract any value from. Mm -hmm. So communication within the team is very important. And so what you really want is the unicorn in the middle who's able to provide that communication and the experience of all the different skill sets in order to take the team forward. Right. And I guess if you were going to study in those areas to go into one of those roles historically, you do your Masters of Statistics or your Masters yeah, of Analytics right. or, or something like that. And I guess now this program sits... I, I, I'm assuming that Academic Board didn't let us call it the Master of Unicorn, um, but you know the data science and decisions really sits in that intersection, that, that point. And I think one of the really interesting things, it's, it's owned by the School of Mathematics, which is um, coincidentally the number one mathematics school in, in Australia, but highly interdisciplinary, which is, which is quite new as a teaching model and a, and a course design model. Um, so tell us a little bit about where it branches off into other areas of the university beyond just mathematics. Sure. Well, I mean, probably unlike a lot of other uh, data science degrees at other universities, um, it's completely taught in three streams. Mm. So there is the, there's one third of it that's been taught by maths and stats, one third that's been taught by computer science, and one third that's been taught by business. So even if you have a background in any one of these areas, by taking this, uh, these programs in data science, you're going to get exposed to all of the uh, separate components of this as taught by people in those discipline areas. So you'll learn their language, mm -hmm. uh, you'll know where they're coming from, but you'll also uh, understand the middle ground um, and how to communicate be be between the three areas. Yeah, and the education is delivered by our colleagues across um, you yes. know, the School of Mathematics, UNSW Business, UNSW Engineering as well, which is really um, quite exciting to be able to get that interdisciplinary sort of approach. Um, and I think you touched there on the, the background of students coming in to the program. What sort of careers, study backgrounds might we see students um, really jumping into this sort of program? Um, well, so, uh, so one group of people might be those that have the, uh, the degrees in any one of those discipline areas. So if you've got a degree in economics or mathematics or, or computer science, then you're able to quickly get into this program. Yeah. Um, we also have an undergraduate in data science and decisions here at UNSW. Um, that's a perfect priming for this program as well. Okay. Um, so look, there's, there's a, whole rate, a whole load of different uh, opportunities here that you can, you, can, you can enter with. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess um, it's really looking at, you, and you can jump onto our website and look at some of the really specific um, prerequisite components, but I think it's important to recognise whilst we're looking for people with a background in maths and stats or a cognate sort of discipline, um, we do recognise industry experience as well as an entry criteria for this right, program. Yeah, yeah. Um, which makes it quite unique. And you can jump straight into the graduate certificate in this program, um, and that's ready for enrolment um, as of February next year. So please, if you're, if you're considering it, think about that. Um, but it also then directly ladders into the master's program. So the courses are the same. You, you can taste it, I guess, in the grad certificate and then go straight to the master's. Yep, yep. So, so there, are, there are three programs uh, altogether. There's the graduate certificate, which is, comprises four courses. Yeah. There's the graduate diploma, which is eight courses. And then there's the master's degree, which is 12 courses. 12 courses, yep. although some of that will be a research degree that you, mm. you, know, you work on a project uh, in whatever discipline area you like, um, and with an academic supervising, you solve a problem, you write a report, you give, uh, you give a seminar at the end. Yeah. So uh, all these courses are nested, so it's quite easy for you to say, enroll in the graduate diploma mm. right now, um, and then when the master's program is announced um, later on next year, then just transfer your credit across yeah. uh, to the full master's program. Yeah. Absolutely. And we've got some questions coming in. Um, thank you for that, that uh, are very much related to that. So sh both Shake and Sean um, were asking questions about the entry requirements coming to this program. So do we will post a link um, in the video notes as well that you can follow up on the specific entry requirements. Um, and Shake, I think you've asked there if um, I have no maths background, can I do this degree? Um, so I guess it's yes and no. We're looking for industry experience than if you didn't have the mathematics um, in your undergraduate degree. We're looking for about five years in a related sort of discipline um, in that area. Um, Sean, I think you've, you've asked a similar question, so hopefully that's answered that one. Um, now, Lehan had a, had a good question here as well. So um, I think, Scott, you touched on we've got this program at undergraduate and we've got this program at postgraduate. So Lehan was wondering what are the pros and cons for doing it at an undergraduate versus a 
postgraduate level. Now, you described it as a bit of a progression piece. Is that is that sort of how you're thinking at the moment? Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. So it depends really what you're looking for. I mean, um, when I was when I was growing up and going to university, this was not an option. Mm. So I had to choose. Um, and if you have any strong preference that you want to specialize in a particular area, you know, you could take an undergraduate in a particular area of specialization and then switch to the postgraduate yep. um, course uh, and then get broaden your horizons there. Or you could, you know, you could you could take the data science, data science and decisions decisions degree yep. at an undergraduate level, um, and and then you know specialize at, um, at, at the postgraduate level. Mm. So it really depends what you're looking for. Do you want to be an all-round person who knows a lot about everything, or do you really want to focus and specialize? Mm. And then it's just a matter of where you choose to do that. Okay. But I might, might just point out that in the um, in in the master's program, um, the data science and decisions masters that we're talking about now. Um, there is the option to specialize slightly in one of the areas. Mm. So based on some of the electives you choose, you can have your, you know, your degree in data science and decisions with a specialization in computer science if you happen to choose some of the computer science electives. Yeah. So there is that degree of specialization you can have within that program. Yeah, and I think that's really interesting because everybody does this fundamentals of data science program um, right at the very start of the program. Yep. And then you get to go off and choose. So you get to choose from you know, the economics courses, the computer science courses as well. Um, so there's, there's choice. It's not a you come and do these four units, for example, in the graduate certificate. Um, you start with data, the fundamentals, and then you, you go on and you branch out. So you get to choose that. Sort yeah, of so, so, so there is approach. choice, but there is some structure there as well. I mean, mm. we, we want people coming through this program to really have the expertise in, in all three of the disciplines. Yeah. So you can choose within the maths, and you can choose within the computer science, and you can choose within the business, but you must take courses in each of those areas just so that you've got the broad, um, broad level of understanding. Yeah, and I think it's, it is that broad level of understanding that seems to be driving the industry at the moment. I, I, we, hear, we hear it, but there's, there's some stats. I'll throw some stats at you. Um, so we are you know, looking at some of the employment forecasts in this sort of area. We're looking at growth of 2.4% over the next five years, which doesn't sound like a huge amount, but the actual general workforce is more back at 1.5%. Yep. So, you know, the demands are definitely there. Um, and, you know, Deloitte sort of models out the lifetime salary bump of, of people in this, in this field with a postgraduate qualification um, as being sort of a 51% sort of um, increase to the, to the lifetime salary premium over the course of your that's, working that's life. That's pretty good. It's yeah. not bad. Well, you're the statistician, so I, guess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I rely on you. Um, so I've get, I guess um, I've, got a, I've got a good broad question in from Sophia now, um, is you know, how can data be used to make better decisions? I guess if you, you mentioned a whole lot of different areas that you've been working on in the last week. I think you said you were going to social media next week, so we might tap into our LinkedIn network um, then as we go, but can you just give us one interesting e example of using data to make better decisions that you've come across recently? Sure. Well, let, let's think of sort of a sort of a more a, a government example. So, um, you know, people who were selling bottled water, they need to drill into the groundwater, mm. they need to pull out the water, and then they want to sell it. Mm -hmm. um, now, the government has to decide whether to allow them to do that. Uh, and the, knowledge they, the kind of knowledge they need for all this, all to make this decision, is you know, what's the level of the groundwater? Uh, are there fractures in there or not? And it's a really, really complex system. Mm -hmm. And you cannot make that kind of decision with, you know, here with Australian resources without collecting data yeah. on that and getting lots of expert opinion in on that as well. So that's just something I've come across recently. Um, but really, I mean, you can't make any decision in government, in industry without evidence. Mm. And the data is your evidence. Mm. And so being able to process the data correctly, knowing when it's biased, knowing what methods to yeah. use, knowing how to access it, it's all part of that. So really, it's ubiquitous. Okay. I think it, it felt like a little bit of a loaded question. Funnily enough, my boss's name is Sophia and, and I'm often renowned for going on gut feel. So I think she's trying to make a hint there about, uh, about data, but that's okay. Um, Gonzalo asked us a question on, um, can I pursue this if I have an engineering background? I think the answer to that is absolutely yes. We're looking for, um, Gonzalo, hopefully you've got a mathematics, you would have done a fair bit of mathematics as part of that um, program. So definitely if you do want to look at the specific entry requirements, um, jump onto the link um, as part of this video and, and have a look at those there as well. You'll also see instructions on how to apply. Now, normally we do shut off um, applications at the end of November for the following year, but because this is a new program, we're live for applications. You can jump on and apply at any point in time through our Apply Now portal, and the link to that is, is in the notes as well. So please do jump on, um, put in an application if you're interested. 
Um, I think in terms of the actual logistics of the program, we'll be starting in February yep. um, next year. And if you're interested in the graduate certificate, you do four units as we sort of spoke about. Um, and the way that we structure that at UNSW is via our term system. So you do two 10 week terms um, and you'll be done in essentially 20 weeks of study with the graduate certificate. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so another interesting, we're going for the big hard hitting questions now. I think our audience has really latched into this topic. So thank you, please keep sending them through. Um, Cassandra asks, um, how important are ethics and privacy in this field? Well, so that's a very hot topic. It is a hot topic. It is a hot topic. And I think I mentioned Uber and Netflix earlier as well. So. Yeah. I mean, the answer is very. I mean, that, that's mm. part of the challenge. Um, you know, I mean, from my perspective, working in statistics, how can you um, build statistical models yeah. based on data where you're not really allowed to look at the data mm. fully? So, um, you know, that, that's going to happen within hospitals. It's going to happen, you know, uh, public data from, from the ABS. Um, and just when you don't want to release data uh, as well. Um, it, it's very complicated and it's a big challenge. There are a lot of clever people working on this. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe you'll be working on this uh, yourselves after taking the, this course. I, I don't know. Mm. But it's a huge challenge and I you know it's, it's a very important one. Yeah. Okay, great. And I think on, on that note, on the challenges and what you might be working towards in this course, we're going to wrap it up and call it a day. Please do feel free to follow us. Um, feel free to follow our science LinkedIn page as well. We will keep this content up if you'd like to revisit it um, on both our corporate and our science channels. So you can, you can check those out. You can share them, forward them to your friends who might be interested as well. If you would like to apply, as I said earlier, applications are now open. Um, so you can jump onto the link in the notes below um, and please do consider that. If you've got any further questions, you can post them there as well and we will get back to you with answers to those or you can contact UNSW at any point in time. Well, welcome back to our LinkedIn channel. We've had a really fantastic response to our LinkedIn Live. Thank you very much for all of your questions. Scott's been kind enough to hang around for another few minutes. You're welcome. Um, he checked his data and it, and it said he could stay, so that was good. Um, one of the really big questions we had was, why is UNSW the best place to come and study this sort of um, degree? And, and Scott, you were, you were really interested in the way that this program was developed as a point of differentiation. Yeah, so for me, there's, there's two primary reasons why UNSW is a really good place for this. Um, the first is simply because the program is put together between the three pillars, between maths and stats, computer science, and the business faculty. Mm -hmm. And you're taught um, by people in each of these disciplines, so you're getting this really good um, breadth of knowledge and learning. Mm -hmm. Now, I compare this to data science degrees, which I've seen at some other universities, and they tend to be owned fully by, say, the School of Maths, who's doing all of the teaching there, or, or computer science, who's doing all of the teaching. Now, they may have more or less the same coverage, um, but the, the perspectives that you get from being taught from different faculties and so on is, is really valuable. Mm. So that'd be the first reason. Um, the second reason, of course, is that uh, UNSW is in Sydney, and Sydney is a beautiful place, and it's in a beautiful country, Australia, mm. uh, and, and what more reason do you need? Absolutely. Um, so the next part of that question, I guess, is how do I get in? What skills and um, background do I need to get in? And, and we've covered that, but just to be really clear, um, really, we're looking for people with a background in mathematics um, or a cognate discipline. So your business analytics, um, engineering as well, those sort of areas. Um, but we do also recognize industry um, experience. So five years in industry in those sort of disciplines um, and we'll be happy to assess you for entry into this program. So um, if you don't have a formal undergraduate background in uh, mathematics or data science, then we'd still encourage you um, to apply with your industry experience as well. Um, and the last big question that we really had was what sort of industries can I work um, in in this area? And it's, it's a big question. Pretty much. Um, we, we don't have time to list them all, but I think probably the obvious ones, you know, we talked about the tech sector in our live post, um, finance, retail, science, um, medicine, but there's some, there's some other ones that are not necessarily apparent as well. Scott. Well, yeah, I mean, e even things like medical imaging, which mm. is, is really huge. I mean, there's a lot of money going into this sector to automate medical imaging and diagnosis and things like that. Um, and other sort of things that you wouldn't necessarily think of. So airline scheduling, mm. you know, uh, you know how, how quickly can I have the airplanes landing on, on my runway before you know, yep. they're going to crash into each other and things like that. So, so really the answer is, you know, every industry 
um, which, which has to deliver a service, mm -hmm. really relies on data to make the decisions in order to deliver that service efficiently and, and I guess, profitably. Yeah, okay, right. So it may actually be a graduate from one of our programs that solves getting airplanes in and out of Sydney on time. I hope so, yes. Excellent. Well, that gives us something to look forward to. Thank you very much for joining us again. If you do have any further questions or would like any further information about applying for our Graduate Certificate in Data Science and Decisions, please jump on to the link below um, and get in touch with any further questions. Thank you.